everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan, and today you join me on a little bit of a different video. I don't have any tutorials or how-tos. Today is all about automotive myth busting. Ever since I got into this business as a young lad, I've worked with older mechanics, even my own father, my grandfather have always told me if you get a new car, at about a thousand miles, you should change the braking oil out and get all that metal out of there because as an engine starts up new, uh, the metal surfaces are kind of getting used to each other, the piston rings on the uh, cylinder walls and bearing material a little bit here and there, and it all kind of adds up and you just don't want that in your engine. That's what I've always been told and I've always done and I've always more or less believed. But I've always had that sneaking suspicion in the back of my mind like, well, maybe that was true back in like the 60s, 70s, and 80s, but surely, the newer engines, the newer manufacturers have gotten this down to an exact science and maybe that's not necessary anymore. And that's exactly what we're gonna find out today. So what we have is a brand new Toyota Tacoma with about 800 miles or so. And I'm gonna do the braking oil at it and we're gonna take a super close look at the filter and the oil. So let's jump into it. And new 2023 Toyota Tacoma V6. It's a pretty sweet ride. What makes this one especially good is it's a manual always good and you can see that our odometer is right at 851 miles so that's going to be perfect for our little experiment for here today so this is gonna be our catch basin for our experiment it's completely clean i know it's kind of looks a little stained here but i promise those are just stains it is exceptionally clean in there and then i have a magnet just sitting at the bottom of the pan so any kind of metal bits will automatically be attracted to that so i'm interested to see the results so I'm only interested in like the first one or two quarts for our experiment. And because uh, if you think about it, all the metal is going to sink to the bottom of the pan anyway. So I can go ahead and remove our drain bolt. There we go, at the first one or two quarts. So to remove this oil filter housing, you actually have to have a special socket. It's the best way to go about it because you don't want to ruin the filter housing. And make sure it's on correctly like that so it's fully seated. And then we can just turn it to the left. And then the housing should come off with minimal drippage. Yeah, that wasn't bad at all. So now what we can do is remove our old filter element and set that aside. Grab so here's our oil filter out of our Tacoma and you can see, well, you can just pull the pleats apart on the filter and to my eye, everything looks fine, looks normal. And that's awesome. But I think we can get a closer look and it's going to involve removing one of these pleats as a little sample. So let's go take a look at this under a microscope. Before we even get to the microscope, to my naked eye, I can see a little bit of metal right there, a little glinty, and right there, a little glinty. So this is, the plot's thickening on this. So I've borrowed my uncle's microscope here, and this is a serious piece of kit, and it's gonna be able to show us exactly what is on our filter material, which I've already cut a sample off and put it on the deck. So I have the filter material under our microscope, standard garage issue, and we can just see that the filter material, you know, sort of looks okay under this magnification, but if I scroll over to our left here, look at that. That's quite a bit of metal in there. I know it's under a high magnification, but stuff like that could easily ruin your engine if you don't get it out of there quickly, which is why, uh, you know, all the old guys have always told me to change the braking oil. We can up our magnification. So you can really see that piece. It's quite large. That is bigger than I thought that would be. And I understand it's under magnification and everything, but that is some pretty clear evidence that the old adage is correct. So here's our oil from earlier, and I have one side of the pan kind of kicked up with a little block of wood. It's been sitting for um, quite a few hours now. So the idea is that all the non-magnetic material is going to slosh eventually down to this side of our bowl here. And what I'm gonna do is take a uh, 5cc syringe, put it at the very bottom of it, and I'm just going to try to suck up as much material as I possibly can from it. There we go. There's one. I'm going to do a second one just to be sure. Just like that. 
from the very bottom, so if there are any particulates that aren't magnetic, they will be sucked into those syringes. Now, what I'm gonna do next is fetch my magnet. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I have my nice gloved hand because oil can be icky. And I'm just gonna fish in there, it's not too deep and pull that out and then we can get a good look at that and see if it has any glinties on there as well. So we have a very close look at that magnet we saw earlier and we can see there is no metal in here at all. This is perfectly clean. I wouldn't worry one bit about that. So as far as I can tell so far, there is nothing to worry about in our oil, but this only proves there's no magnetic material. What we need to do next is figure out if there's any non-magnetic material, and that's what our samples are for that we took earlier. So I've had my syringe hanging upside down like this for about 20 minutes. Any kind of particulate that I can't quite see is going to settle to the bottom. I'm going to just put a nice little drop there on our glass, and then grab our cover sheet. Again, everything's nice and clean, as clean as I could humanly get it. Bloop. Get it on top of there, and we can slide it underneath are on our deck underneath our microscope, and we'll get a good idea of what our oil looks like at the microscopic level. So again, I have our slab of oil underneath our microscope, and I'm gonna put a pin into the field of view so you can get a gauge of reference. There's my pin at the very edge of it right there. You can see just a little speck of material that's most likely not gotten to the filter yet. So really uh, quite the nothing burger on the oil. So now we know it's a nothing burger. There's really nothing in the oil. The oil completely checks out. I've checked a few slides worth now of that bottom oil. I'm confident in saying the filter is definitely doing its job and the oil, any kind of particulate you may have seen in the oil uh, thus far, just hasn't gotten to the filter yet, but it's a good idea to change it. So we're really getting to the bottom of this, uh, you know, myth busting, you know, uh, old mechanics trick here. So what I'm gonna do is t basically pour as much as I can of the top layer off of our oil here, because I'm only interested really in the sediment, if there is any, at the bottom of it. So I'm just gonna do a nice careful pour and keep an eye on it, just to see if there's any kind of glinties or something. I honestly don't think we're gonna find anything. I think the filter is doing its job. And we already looked at it on the microscopic level, so I doubt there's anything left for us. I'm not seeing anything as I'm pouring, because you can see through the film of it you would see any kind of things like that. The light would catch it and I'm just not seeing anything. So here is the very last bit of our oil. If there is any kind of sediment, we would see it in here. Any kind of specks on the bottom, like this right there, that's like a stain on the uh, bowl. I wouldn't worry about that. You can even run your finger through it and I can tell you there's absolutely nothing on the bottom of this pan. So the oil completely checks out clean. So I think that's pretty conclusive. The filter is definitely doing its job, but there was metal in there I really didn't expect to see. I thought it was going to be pristine and perfect and prove that maybe that was true to change the break-in oil at one time. But honestly, for my money and my engine, engines are expensive, oil's cheap, filters are cheap, probably a good idea to change the oil. So the old adage definitely stands in my book. I'm sure you're gonna have a different opinion about it, especially when the dealer says, oh, you know, do your first oil change at 12,000 miles. I'm gonna have to highly disagree with that. And it's your car, how much does your car matter to you? I would definitely change that brake and oil out. This has really uh, confirmed what all the old guys I've worked with and my dad and grandfather have always told me. So I think this is myth confirmed. Definitely change out your brake in oil with a new fresh set and a new filter. Thank you so very much for watching. If you found this video interesting, please consider giving it a like or subscribing. It really helps the channel out. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.